Mr. Zimmer, it's it's great to have you here uh, next to Junkie XL. Um, but I think a lot of listeners and people who are watching are wondering, what is Hans Zimmer doing at the Amsterdam dance event? And I know you have a big room full of modeler uh, synthesizers at home. Um, uh, what's your relationship with dance music? Well, I th look, I'm an electronic musician. You know, and first time I saw Midnight Express, you know, Georgie Moroder. I, I don't think... I don't think either Junkie and I would be here without Georgie Moroda, and I don't think this would be going on. You know, um, there was this, uh, and and it's the thing we do. It's, it's just you know people give it different labels. That's all that's happening. I'm just here because number one, my friend Junkie said let's go, and number two, it was because. I don't fit in myself, I don't fit into that label. You know, I'm a musician, he's a musician. You know, EDM is, a, is music that I love and because it's the music of my people. It's the music of, you know, what gets me excited. I think it's the music of our time and it, it will change, but you know, don't exclude me from it. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Junkie, can you tell me, you moved from the Netherlands uh, to the United States in 2002. Uh, when did the two of you meet and, and h how did this relationship uh, between you guys come to happen? Well, it, 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 it became because of um, a, a common friend. <clears throat> uh, uh, composer Harry Gregson Williams that um, worked with Hans a lot and then started his own uh, career. Um, and he was he was doing all these um, movies that had a, an interesting electronic touch, like Phone Booth and, and Man of Fire. And uh, and I started um, working with him, uh, interning with him, so to speak. So it was kind of like a, a weird scenario where I had a number one hit in 32 uh, countries, and at the same time I was chopping up samples in his basement. And um, and I think um, Harry at a certain point called you and he said, y y you want to call this Tom guy? And then Hans said, well, I don't know who that is. And it's like, well, just call him. It, he, he's fun. And then so Hans called me and then uh, he says, I have no idea who you are, but Harry says I should call you. Uh, and so Hans, tell me, what, what happened next? I don't know what happened next. It's just, we, you know, the, 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 the thing is, you know, like, like you saying about you're chopping up samples. I mean, I... I wasn't a composer at the beginning. I was just a geek, nerdy kid with a synthesizer. And my career started off in London making crazy, geeky, nerdy sounds. Um, and I was working for another film composer. But I just, I just knew I was following. In fact, we did, we did do a movie together, but we didn't. You know, we, you, had a, you, know, you had your Elvis song in this movie I was working on, stuff like this. Um, but really the thing is once we met we didn't stop talking and but it took a while before actually it, it, it is strictly a matter of space really yeah. we're only talking about space and the what space I mean is there wasn't a room available at my studio you know and then um, I suppose I checked somebody out and I went hey Tom come on over you know and 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 you know, Tom worked with me on Inception. You know, I, 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 everybody was saying we need to do a remix, and I didn't want people to really do a remix. I didn't, you know, this music was very personal to me, you know. But I, I trusted him, you know, and um, and and we, we, you know, our conversations have always been not about oh, it's just EDM or electronic or dance music, etc. Our our conversations go across the whole world of music and the whole world of storytelling and the whole world of, you know, and in a way, it was really important for Junkie to break out of the confines that he was being put in. And I'm a great jailbreaker, you know? I, 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 you know, I go and take the dynamite and off we go. Can you tell me, Junkie, um, uh, how the process goes? How do you guys work together when you work together? Because it's the two of you. You m maybe have two different opinions when you work together. No? Is it all? No, but uh, just, just to elaborate a little more on what you just said, is that um, I've always been a guest of the dance music scene. Right. I was not part of the dance music scene. I was a guest because I, I combined 
uh, electronic elements with guitars and with live vocals. And that was like in 95, where a lot of people said, oh, that's not done. You can't, you can't do that in dance music. But it worked and it was accepted, you know, uh, bec because of it. And I think <clears throat> what connects us together is, uh, you know, this seamless, endless fountain of ideas. And, and try to approach things differently every time. And, you know, sometimes it, it's very successful and sometimes it's less su successful. If I look back at my, at my albums, um, it's, I, I've tried certain things and some worked and some were more than the, than the part of the sums. And I think um, what I really like about working with, with, with you is um, <clears throat> seeing the whole structure of uh, film music and dare to go somewhere, you know, Dare to dare to take the gloves off and but and 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 try try unique things. But nobody stops us. You see, the great thing about film is, you know, if today I want to do an electronic cast score and tomorrow, because whatever I'm working on, I always want to go and do the thing I'm not doing. Right? You know, we're all like that. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow I want to do a big orchestral thing, and the next day I want to do the psychedelic country and western heavy metal score. I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the, the the problem in the mu for me the problem of the music business, and I I really am going to go mm -hmm. and accuse the music business is the the reason the music business is dying is because it puts everybody into a little box, and you know when you know I have I haven't actually seen Junkie in a while because he's been in Australia for four months, five months, yeah, six months. Um, but he would send me these amazing string pieces, you know, this amazing, beautiful written, I mean, uh, string writing, you know. And he didn't send it to me to go, hey, look, I can do this, because I know he can do this. Of course, we all know we can do this. It's just like, you know, I think it was on Man of Steel. I had this idea for this guitar riff. Was Man of Steel? And mm -hmm. I'm sort of playing it really badly. And he goes, excuse me, can I? Ha and he just takes my guitar out of my hands and just goes, like this, you know? And it was like, yes, that's, you are playing what I'm trying to feel, you know? And uh, so we're, we're, we're just like kids, you know? It's, it almost sounds like you're twin brothers or something. Well, we have many twin brothers. I mean, we, yeah. we did this, you know, recently we did this thing where we really, we really formed a band, you know, with Pharrell Williams and Johnny Ma and um, Mike Einziger. And I mean, we, we, there were a lot of people in that room at one point, you know? Lot, and, yeah. and we spent just three days just improvising, you know? And everybody Was is- Was it Spider-Man 2? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because you put minimal classical music and, and, and uh, rock music and Pharrell Williams only in five minutes or something? Well, well, no, wait a second. We wrote, oh, hang on, we wrote, and we wrote it really fast. It was just like, you know, ideas were firing. We wrote this very classical piece for 12 woodwinds, you know, bassoons and clarinets, etc. that went into dubstep, right? And, yeah, it starts off with the, the very classical, then Johnny's guitar comes in, the, and, then, and, and, and then Junkie throws a hand grenade into it, um, which is perfect. And but, then Pharrell comes in? No, yeah, no, he, he was right was there at the beginning. It was yeah. right at the beginning, yeah. you know. And so, and, it, and we, we wrote it nearly in real time. You know, it was, it was just the energy of these people, you know. And, you know, I suppose we should say it's re it is really hard work. It's only hard work because we have too many ideas. Mm -hmm. And so ideas are the enemy of sleep, you know? But we don't have careers. We have a life. And our life is, you know, I wake up thinking about music. I go to bed thinking about music. And I've been doing this since I was six years old. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, like doctors and accountants always complain about how long that training and all this stuff. We've been doing this since we could reach the mm -hmm. piano. And we're, and we're still on training. And we're, yeah, we're and still we're doing it. And, we're, we're, you know, um, this is so useless, but I'll tell you. Um, a few months ago, the conductor Claudio Bardo died. And I'm up, you know, at four o'clock in the morning, the way I am on YouTube. And I'm, I'm thinking, oh, he, he just died. And I just randomly put his name in, and I found this performance he was doing in Lucerne, you know, and all I did, I, I watched his face 
for this whole performance. And you saw him go through a, a roller coaster of emotion and the connection, the communication he had with his, with his orchestra and his players and the communication he had with the audience. And it got to the end of it and I thought, that's a life well lived because we musicians have this opportunity every day to go through this roller coaster of emotions, mm -hmm. you know, and com to communicate and to do this stuff. So it's a life well lived, you know, and, and okay, we're not curing cancer, but if you have to pick it as a job, it's not so bad. You're speaking uh, of emotions. Um, in, uh, uh, in let's pick a random movie. There's almost almost always a kiss in a movie. But the music of you guys let me experience that kiss every time, um, like like it's the first time I see a kiss in a movie. How do you guys do that? Start over every time, when 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 the message of well now I don't want to say the message of a kiss is always the same, but it always looks the same. Do you know what I mean? Um, before I let. Uh, Hans answer that because I think you've dealt with this over 250 times but I dealt with one unique occasion on the 300 Rise of an Empire where the kiss was not the romantic kiss and it actually turned into a porn fight and uh, so the music needed to be something that was absolutely not that and it was it was it was it was hinting at the sexual tension between the two of them but that once they kissed it it was not a romantic kiss it was a, a respect of two warriors but also that sexual attraction, and it turned into this, you know, pornographic uh, uh, fight. I actually have never dealt to this point with uh, the uh, 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 typical, uh, the typical uh, film kiss. But I think it's totally, it, it totally depends on what movie it is and and who the who the characters are. And Hans has dealt with that. I think I, actually, I think Junkie was in the room that I was working on this movie. And I, I, I'm very patient usually, and but the scene is, it's, a, it's New York, it's raining, a girl is walking and she's crying because she's just broken up with her boyfriend. And the director is spending a really long time explaining it to me, and I finally went, do you know how often I've written this scene? <laughs> but no, but, but the thing is, any kiss, any kiss you have is going to be different. And when the kiss is the same that you have with your partner, it's time to move on. So the job is, it has to be, it, it has to be the, the, it has to be the context of these two people. Poets have written poetry about kiss. Pop songs have been written about kisses forever. And somehow, the reason we still write about it is because we still don't know how to put it into words or into music. You know, because. And, and that's the thing, we're, we're still trying to hunt down how we're going to say it in the most perfect way. Mm -hmm. So you are still looking for the perfect way and the perfect way maybe will never be found. I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you a great example why I love, being, like, love doing what I do. When we did this movie Hannibal with Ridley Scott, you know, um, the first thing I said to Ridley was, this is a romantic comedy. I want to treat this like a, a romantic comedy, you know, which he thought was hilarious. And he said, okay, go and do that. And they had finished shooting. It was a very hard shoot. And it's Sunday night, 11 o'clock at night. You know, everybody is home with their family except for Ridley, Pietro Scalia, the editor, and myself. We're in this cutting room. And there's a shot on the screen of a tear running down uh, Clarice Starling's face. And I'm going, she loves him. And Ridley goes, no, this is a tear of disgust. And I can't remember what Pietro said. But we got into this argument. And, and, you know, and now we're standing up and we're shouting at each other. And I had this sort of, you know, like the camera pulls back moment. I'm, I'm seeing three grown men in the middle of a night being passionate about the meaning of a tear on a woman's cheek. And I thought, this is the right life to be in. Perfect. Sounds great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, the two of you, uh, um, what are you working to? Uh, what, are, what are you guys working on right now? Uh, well, I'm in the middle of uh, finishing uh, the new Mad Max Fury Road that comes out May next year, and um, while I'm doing that, I'm also having a little bit of a break. Tell me, can you tell me something about the break? Hey, well, I got this idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's usually how our breaks end. <laughs> <laughs> and how's you are working on 
Kung Fu Panda Part 3, I thought. Eventually, eventually. No, I, I'm, I finished this movie um, a little while back called Interstellar. And it, it was, I don't know why. Well, I do know why now, but you know, it was very personal to me. And, and it was sort of the, my publicist will now shoot me, but I'm going to say it. You're never supposed to say it was the best experience I ever had, but it really was the best experience. And I just sort of went, let, you know, in a Faustian way, let that moment remain. I don't want to go and rush off while, you know, rush off and fall in love straight away again. And so I'm still sort of living in that moment away. You know, and, and plus the other thing, I wanted, you know, I, I always had stage fright. So I did a, you know, I thought I can't have my life be dictated by fear. So I did a couple of concerts in London last week, um, which went pretty well even though he was supposed to be part of it, but he was stuck in Australia. Yeah. And what are your plans for, for Amsterdam dance event? What are you uh, up to the, the next days? Uh, well, for me, it was um, uh, doing the panel that I did earlier today. And uh, other than that, it's great to see a lot of people that I've worked with in the past and going to be working with in the future. And seeing my friends and family and also enjoying Amsterdam again. I haven't been here for a long time and it's really good to be back. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's really simple. I mean, I, I, I go around Amsterdam, I see the EDM crowd, I see the festival, I see everything. And I'm, I'm thinking, Junkie, why did you ever leave? You're a fool. <laughs> This is a perfect town, <laughs> you know? Um, so, no, you know, the, the mistake both you and I have made is right now we're working. Next year, we're going to come here and party. nobody will know and we're just going to party. But seeing each other and meeting each other and talking to each other isn't, okay. isn't really never, work. We never do You just told me, but no, but you just told me you don't see it as a career, you don't see it at work. You just... I, don't. I don't, I don't. But, you know, it's like, you know, we hang out a lot together. Uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much uh, for your time. And it was an honor to speak to you, talk to you together. Right. Thank you. Yes.